welcome to India, where we are proud of our heritage, where we celebrate our diversity, where we are committed that the only way of growth and development is democracy, where people have the right to elect their leaders. And above all, our abiding commitment to the rule of law and in the glorious identity of an independent judiciary. That is what our primary constitutional value is about. The last 70 years of our journey after becoming independent is a glorious journey where in spite of many challenges we have sought to keep our democratic commitment in focus, respected the challenges and the resolution which the judiciary gave and the country accepted. If we see the last 70 years of the March of India, all the issues, complicated challenges, which could arise anywhere in the world, India has to face. Of race, of religion, of language, of caste, of community and region. There were challenging times. While the polity responded, the Supreme Court, as the shining beacon of our judicial system, came with judicial resolutions and the country accepted. That has been the great march of our democracy, which we celebrate. Therefore, rule of law, which you are going to talk about, in my very considered view, contains two elements. One is fairness. The second is justice. And the third is certainty. These three elements must always comprise the rule of law principle which you are going to talk about. I was just mentioning Honorable the Chief Justice in the morning that I was very much impressed by the topics we have selected for deliberations. Gender justice is something we are very proud of. Gender justice is the core of India's constitutional ethos. Fundamental right against discrimination on the ground of religion and sex. Today India is very proud as to how Indian women are doing so well. You can see so many women judges sitting here of high courts and supreme court, including chief justices. Our prime minister has taken the lead in empowerment of women in India. Beti bachao, beti parhao. Educate the girl child, develop the girl child. As an IT minister, I am proud to share that India is home to some of the finest creation of IT initiatives globally recognized. 40 lakh, 4 million professionals work in India's IT sector. One third are women. And indirectly, close to 10.4 million professionals work there, close to half are women. Our Prime Minister was bold enough to permit that Indian Air Force pilots will also fly the fighter planes. And this was complemented by the recent judgment of Supreme Court where Indian women army officers were given the right to command. I think these are great initiatives of our gender empowerment. There are challenges of victimization, of tormenting women, young girls, and we responded, making rape law tougher, including capital punishment, establishing more than 1,000 fast-track courts. And surely it is a work in progress where we have to ensure 
that while we celebrate Indian women scientists joining the space program for Mars, but should also get justice. That is the opportunity and also the challenge. The second issue is populism and challenges of justice. In a democracy, we welcome dissent. We welcome populism too. We have a problem also when populism impinges upon well-settled constitutional principles. And populism also becomes a problem when those who have been rejected in the popular mandate becomes the biggest flag bearers of populism. In our constitutional scheme, ladies and gentlemen, it's very clear that government must be left to those elected by people of India to govern. And obviously, they have to be accountable to the parliament in many ways to judicial decisions and also to the people after elections. But what is challenging is that now populism is seeking to have greater accountability as to what kind of judgment there should be. I'm a great supporter of social media, of freedom. I know it is empowering, but this is a dangerous trend. Judges must be left completely independent to give judgment as to what they think is the correct mode in accordance with the rule of law. But this sinister trend of late developing globally is also in our country, that some people start campaigning as to what kind of judgment they expect. And the judgment is not in accord with that and unleashing all the forces of criticism. Criticizing the judiciary, I always appreciate of the judgment. But some kind of norm has to be maintained if our rule of law has to acquire <coughs> continued resonance. Privacy, as Mrs. Ramana just stated, has been held to be a fundamental right. And we appreciate that. Supreme Court judgment has become a beacon globally. Wonderful judgment being talked about. We're very proud. The right to privacy flows from Article 21, the right to life and the right to live with dignity. And our courts have also stated that terrorist and corrupt have no right to privacy. Because the right to privacy has acquired critical proportion in the wake of digital landscape expanding globally. This is the age of information, information is power. This is the age of communication, communication is power. And, the, and we in India, ladies and gentlemen, to my foreign delegates, I want to give one statistics. India's population 1.3 billion. Mobile phone 1.21 billion. And the digital identity card Aadhaar to supplement your physical identity 1.25 billion. So we Indians only talk in billions. But obviously it is giving rise to a lot of data. Data is important. We need to have a proper balance. And the balance is we accord constitutional sanction to the right of privacy. But we should not kill innovation. We should not kill application of new technology. Our courts have recognized that exception. India today has become the third biggest startup ecosystem in the world. And Mr. Venu Gopal was talking about the challenges of poverty. How we are tackling technology to elevate poverty. I want to give you only one number. Under the leadership of the Prime Minister, we are sending welfare measures directly to the bank account of the poor so that there is no leakage. We opened 370 million bank accounts of the poor. And in 429 government welfare schemes, we have sent 129 billion US dollars 
9.22 lakh crore in the last five years, directly to the bank account. And how much we have saved? 1.70 lakh crore, 23.8 billion US dollar, which used to be pocketed by middlemen and fictitious claimants. And the third number is all the more hilarious. We have removed 8 crore, 80 million fake beneficiaries. Therefore, digital ecosystem also in powers. But we have to respect the privacy. And most important, terrorists should not abuse this system. Mr. Justice Ramana rightly pointed out. Why? Internet is one of the finest creations of human mind. This should not be abused by few. And we need to acknowledge that some of the biggest terrorist threat have also emanated by those who have abused this great invention of human mind. I think that kind of balance has to be there. Therefore, from gender justice to the issue of privacy to the issue of populism, these are challenges. I don't want to further deliberate as to how we are meeting these challenges by changes of logo, by trying to make India a big hub of arbitration, by promoting commercial court movement for trade, addressing the good sense of ease of doing business, and also promoting alternative legal address mechanism by Lok Adalat. Those are well known, we'll talk about it. But what we are very proud of, that we trust our democratic values, we trust our judiciary, and we trust the common instinct of ordinary Indians to select the leaders they want them to govern. When we take all these into account, we have to have a balance, the rights and the duties the identity and the obligation. And most important is speak your mind. Be critical. Ask questions. But it all should work in a manner that the identity of India as a country continues to remain strong and resurgent. Ladies and gentlemen, this time for global challenges for institutions, judiciary, and state. Questions are being asked. How do we seek resolution? That remains an important question. The meeting of some of the finest minds of the world today in this conference, I wish to congratulate the Chief Justice, will surely find an answer. And I'm clear, the only answer is to fall back upon the conventional regulatory mechanism of being governed by rule of law. Thank you. Namaskar. Jai Hind.